Welcome to our online History of Women course. I'm your professor, uh, Professor Giuliano. I am really excited to be teaching you this semester. Uh, this is uh, a very brief overview of the syllabus and assignments, and I'm just trying to give you a brief synopsis of what it's like to take this course online. Um, please know that I am always here for you. All you have to do is email me and I will be there to assist you. So here's my contact information. Uh, there's my email. Uh, here's the textbook listed right here with the image. Um, I just want to let you know ahead of time that we have some movies that are uh, chosen for some of our modules and will be used as a basis for a discussion. They're listed below. Um, uh, I let you know uh, where you can find them. You just click on the link and you are welcome to watch or to read the book instead if you so choose. This is the course description really quickly. Welcome to History of Women. The purpose of the course is to enable both women and men to understand the background of women in American history. Emphasis is placed upon the roles of women in various societies, upon the contributions made by women. The place of the woman from the domestic sphere to the public sphere has undergone much controversy throughout the years and is still debated among society today. The course will focus on the evolution of the woman and several women's movements will be studied in detail. Therefore, it helps if you have a base knowledge of American history from colonial era to present day being that the textbook and lectures will integrate historical events and how they shaped the history of women. Since this is an online course conducted in Canvas, you are required to have daily access to a computer and must be comfortable using technology. You also need to be able to manage your schedule so you can complete your coursework on time. Uh, I highly suggest clicking the link so that you take the orientation to online courses so that you are better prepared. All assignments must be completed by the due date. I want you to understand that there is a due date for each and every assignment. That doesn't mean that you have to do it on that specific date. It means you have to do it by that date. So the, the big tip and the big suggestion I want to give to you is you have to do everything ahead of time. You have to do it several days or even a week before the due date. This way, you don't have to stress. You know it's done. Um, it's totally 100% asynchronous, meaning that this is all conducted on your own time. You can, that's the beauty of doing this online, is that it's all under your control concerning your time. So um, you need to take into consideration your work schedule, your other classes, um, and you, you just need to use really good time management skills. But please note, and I put this throughout the syllabus many, many times, late submissions will not be accepted. There's no excuse, especially because this is conducted online. Um, you never know, you don't want to procrastinate and wait until the day of because your computer could shut down, there could be an internet connection issue, you never know. So with that said, if you ever have an issue using your personal computer, please go to the on-site campus computers and try to use them. Um, there's usually not an issue with them, so always try to use them um, if need be. So with that said, while I'm honored to be your professor, I want to address some technical areas. You are responsible for meeting the deadlines for all assignments, reading the textbook, viewing the online lecture PowerPoints, actively participating in our online discussions, and getting help from me, your professor, if needed. Please use Netiquette for our discussion boards and click this link to find out more about that. I have, por I have posted this course introduction video. I'm including the purpose of the course, a review of the syllabus and assignments. I also have a special getting to know you discussion board um, in which you get to introduce yourself to the entire class and to myself. I look forward to meeting you soon. 
contact me via email. That is the best way um, to get your questions answered. And I will be, uh, uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible. I also have the option of the chat room to talk to you. Please be aware that the chat room is open for anyone to look at. Um, but the good thing about the chat room is that it's live. So you also have the option of setting up a chat room visit um, if need be. If you need accommodations due to a disability, please contact Edison Hall Room 100. There is the phone number. Expected court outcomes really quickly. To demonstrate an understanding of historical events which impacted the feminist movement from the 17th century through to the present day through peer discussions and exams. Analyze varying interpretations of institutions, people, practices, and events in the history of women, including moral and ethical purposes, perspectives, and culturally diverse societies by actively engaging in peer discussions. Demonstrate the consequences of colonization, revolutionary period, industrial revolution, and the world wars on the roles of men and women by taking exams. Relate the events, ideas, people throughout the history of women with present societal condition through peer discussion. Employ appropriate methodologies to study the major topics within the history of women by producing clear, well-organized, and accurate research papers to communicate knowledge of history of women according to AHA standards. You, on your own time, can read the course content areas. There is a total of 12. Academic integrity policy. Please read this very carefully on your own time. I want you to understand, with our online course especially, when it comes to the research paper, you are uploading your research paper into an app called Turnitin. I have the ability to see if you have plagiarized your paper. So you can't get away with copying someone else's paper or paying to have someone write your paper or you know, grab it from an internet source and upload it there because I will know 100% what is going on. You don't want to do that. Um, MCC takes uh, their academic integrity policy seriously and when you go on and graduate to a four-year institution, uh, a university of well-renowned, they are going to not look upon it um, easily either. So it's something that I, I'm just trying to help you out here. Um, I've, I've caught students, unfortunately, in the past doing this, and there's just no way to hide it, I know, okay? So please be extremely wise about your decisions. Student Code of Conduct, I will let you look that up on your own time. It is on the MCC website. Your grade is out of possible 100 points. Here is the scale points to the left, how you get an A, what's considered an A, a B plus, etc. Requirements. Here I break it down. Discussion board, 26% total. Chapter quizzes, 24% total. You have a midterm exam, 15% total. Final exam, 15% total. Research paper, 20% total. All students are expected to complete learning tasks on schedule. Late uh, submissions will not be accepted. If there is an emergency, email me immediately. This is just something to help you out. What to do on your own. Um, that also goes with, you know, time management, goal setting. Um, if you need help with time management or anything like that, just email me and let me know. This is a detailed description of requirements. For every assignment, I have uploaded a Word document with detailed explanation, due dates, and rubrics. The due dates are also very apparent on our Canvas website. You have to be very aware of the dates as well as the time that it is due. Discussion boards. You will participate in online discussions pertaining to primary documents in your course textbook or thematic questions or controversial topics. Um, there's some discussion boards. Read the directions very carefully. You might be, do, be doing something out of the box or unique, um, maybe like doing a blog, maybe like creating a poster online. Um, I'm mixing it up this semester, so we're doing some cool stuff with our discussions. Just read the directions carefully, and if you don't get it, email me and I'll explain it further. 
there are a total of 13 discussion boards, each worth two points. Chapter quizzes. There are 12 chapter quizzes, one per chapter. That is meant to evaluate your comprehension and analysis of each chapter. Each quiz is worth two points. Due dates are located um, on Canvas. A Word doc with description rubric and sample response is uploaded in every single module and every single chapter quiz, and the same is true for discussion boards. You will have a midterm exam worth 15%. This will test your knowledge of chapters one through six. A review will be posted. You can take the midterm exam on any date, but it must be completed by the due date. The same with the final exam, except it will test your knowledge of chapters 7 through 12. You have a research paper. It is 20% of the grade. You will choose one topic provided by the professor and write a research paper that is a college level research paper. I will um, be showing you that research paper here in this course introduction video, uh, PowerPoint video, and I will go over things um, in further detail at that point. You must get it uploaded by the due date. Late submissions will not be accepted. No excuses. This is a grade percentage breakdown for your own knowledge. Check it out. Below are some just some reminders for you. If you need technical support, call the MCC help desk and here's the phone number. Below is the breakdown of each module number, which is when you look at the module, this is considered the weeks that you would be with me in person. Um, so, you know, when you see module one and two, module three, module four, that's considered the week. Um, <clears throat> so here you have week cover that's pertaining to the module number, the, the, you know, like the week. You have chapter numbers and titles here in the syllabus. You have learning objectives located here in the middle. That is what you will obtain after going through that lesson. I have activity or assignment to, uh, to the rate in which it shows you what you will be conducting in that module number or that week covered. And then finally, all the way to your extreme right is the activity due date. So let's just go through this. If you see number one with the due date, it is pertaining to activity one. Activity two will be due by this due, uh, due date, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you just scroll through and you can read that on your own time. Now, I'm going to take you online uh, so that we can quickly go through a couple of things. When you log into Canvas, uh, you will have two ways once you click on our course to access the modules. You will first see this home page. Here you can click the modules link to go to the modules or you can click over here where it says modules and it will take you there. But first I want to talk to you about announcements. So let me click here. Every single, I'd even say almost every single day our announcement tab as well as our emails. What, what I will usually do is post the announcement with something very pertinent, something very important, um, updates, reminders, etc. Okay, so you're responsible always to check those announcements. Here's a sample one, you click on it and you read the, the message. What I, what I always usually do as well is I will go into the email and just email all of you, hey, listen, I've got an announcement posted, please check it out. Um, but regardless, you are responsible for checking both. I'm going to click on our modules through that and give you some things that I want you to know. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. This is the first thing that you have to complete with modules. It's called course and research paper submission and exams. You will go through all of this and you will complete everything there. Okay, so what I did here is I put the research paper submission here in this module up here, as well as the exams, the midterm and the final exam. So I'm just going to take you really quickly past our modules. Okay, when you get to modules seven and eight, you're gonna see this, midterm exam due March 11th. 
It's simply a reminder of when it is due. So all you do is you click on that. Now you could have, you know, hypothetically it already if you chose to do so. Um, whether you took it already or not, it's just a reminder. You can click on the link if you have not already. And if you have already, you don't have to click on the link. Okay, I have done that for the midterm and the research paper, just as reminders. The thing else I want you to know is that you have to click on every single assignment. You cannot go to the next module. So, I have to click on this, the checklist, the syllabus, the course intro video, the course contract, the getting to know you, research paper, paper, final exam, midterm. Don't worry if you're not going to upload the research paper. It doesn't matter. You're just clicking on it. Tell the website that you have, in fact, looked at this, you've completed it, and then you go on. Uh, if you're ready to check out the research paper, you can do that, but it's all uh, at your own pace. Modules, every single assignment, every single thing in the module, you progress to the next module. So that is that. Um, you'll get a good feel when you actually do it yourself to see what things look like. It will make sense to you. Something else I want to go over for you are the lectures. So I decided upload my lectures have points so to begin your presentation I tell you that you can after you download you click here you download it you can either click the presenter key or go slide by slide and click the play button and this is what it looks like so this icon right here okay I hover over it and then I click play and you will hear me giving the lecture welcome to chapter just like that or, so either go slide by slide, push the play button, or click the presenter key and it will automatically start from the beginning and take you through to Welcome the end. Welcome to Chapter 2, Colonial Worlds, 1607. So that is that. Now, um, I think when you click on the final exam, when you click on the midterm exam, you will see a review post on there, so you will be prepared for what is to come in that exam. Um, so don't worry about that. You'll be fine. If you have any questions, let me know. I am clicking now on the research paper. I would like to discuss what that looks like. So I'm clicking it. I'm downloading it right now. Reminder, you will be uploading it into the Turnitin app. Um, remember for the research paper, you want to go over <clears throat> the basic things that you did in English class, okay? You got to remember an introduction that has a thesis in there, um, a conclusion that wraps up the entire paper and proves your, your point that you're trying to make. Um, you have to always cite within the paper when it is not common knowledge as well as have a works cited page. So, with that said, you're required to write one research paper. You're choosing one topic. The paper must be between 10 to 15 pages in length. No, this does not include the cover page or works cited in that page count. Don't freak out. What I want to tell you with regards to the length is that I am more concerned about the quality of your paper versus the length of your paper. I am telling you that it should be ideally between 10 to 15 pages because these are really in-depth um, <clears throat> topics that you should be delving into with your research. So, I, you know, some students might have seven pages and <clears throat> eloquently and effectively provided enough evidence to have a solid paper that proves their thesis effectively with tons of scholarly opinions and information and uh, primary document evidence. So, 
again, quality over quantity. Um, so the uh, approximately 10 pages to 15 pages. Please include a cover page, page numbers, and works cited. You must use Word document and write the name. It's a, I'm sorry, it says the historical figure. It should say, write the name of the topic that you chose when saving your Word document. Um, must be in MLA format. The paper is due, read the due date. It cannot be handed in late, otherwise it will be a zero. There's no excuses for late papers. Do everything ahead of time. This is 20% of your grade. You are welcome to use lecture notes, the textbook, and reliable resources. However, you have to conduct your own research using at least two reliable resources. This does not count lecture notes, primary documents, or the course textbook. Um, scroll down later on to see what a reliable resource means. If you don't understand what that means, you must go to the librarian and ask her to help you with that. If you don't know how to properly cite, you must go to the library and have them help you with that. After you do that, you also are welcome to come to me with any questions you have. I encourage you to email me a rough draft as well as any questions you have about resources or any other issues. Again, late research papers will not be accepted. No excuses, no exceptions. The first topic is about Mexican women immigrating to the United States starting in the 19th century. Um, I welcome you to choose a different immigrant group, but you must approve it with me, and it must be an immigrant group that, uh, immigrant group of women that came over starting in the mid 1800s. Um, with the Mexican women immigrating to the United States, I want you to focus on what factors led Mexican women to choose to come to the U.S. What types of occupations did they perform? Give me more details about what this looks like, meaning their pay, social perceptions. What shaped their ethnic, di ethnic identity? How did society treat Mexican women? Um, you may choose to focus on one life story or more life stories of Mexican women. And then I want you to take it to the 20th century, um, like the 1990s. I want you to provide evidence that proves if the occupation, social perceptions, and ethnic identities of Mexican women have changed. And then I want your opinion about Mexican immigrant women's place in U.S. society. And if you think that uh, there has been progress made, why or why not, you're welcome to include, um, you know, present-day opinions from news from news websites um, and other experts. But you need you need evidence um, to back up your opinion. I want you to purchase the book from the other side for this. Um, you can get it on Amazon for only four bucks, but it does take about two weeks to mail it, so don't wait. I suggest using primary documents from this website, but you also have to include your own research from the library. Next topic is leaders in the first wave of the feminist movement. You will choose one of the following women that I list below. Give an overview of the historical context, overview, overview of what factors led her to fight for women's rights, what actions she took to make a difference for women, how she overcame barriers, and what she achieved for women. Emphasize what makes this woman extraordinary. You should include scholarly opinions of her actions and give your opinion as well. You should include primary documents. Susan B. Anthony is an option. Elizabeth C. Stanton, Sojourner Truth, Carrie Chapman Kate, Lucy, Bar uh, Lucy Burns, or Alice Paul. Um, whatever topic you choose, whatever uh, whatever topic you choose, I am asking you to email me and let me know so that I can help you out with any questions that you may have. Again, for this topic, you only choose one of these historical figures. Moving on to the third topic and final topic is the evolution of lesbians in America. You will write a research paper on the evolution of lesbians in America. You may choose to start in the mid-1800s, our textbook, in chapter 6, page 316 to 317, gives you some background information on that, and I want you to read that over before you start researching. 
So you're going to start around the mid 1800s and then take it to the 21st century, meaning the 2000s. You, you have the freedom to focus this in any direction you choose. You may want to focus on lesbians in the movies, maybe lesbians in the military and how that evolved, um, uh, lesbian politics, you choose. You, uh, for this one especially, you must email me if you choose this topic so I can help focus your thoughts into a concise thesis. You're going to focus on, as written in our textbook, lesbianism in the modern sense had not been named. You're going to describe the homosocial relationships that were present in the mid-1800s and what that meant. Then you're going to chart how this evolved into open and more socially accepted relationships. Mention famous lesbians. When did lesbianism become more accepted? Why? After providing scholarly opinions and facts, do you think lesbians have enough social political acceptance in the U.S.? Explain. There are plenty of books and articles in the MCC library to aid you with this topic. Um, I suggest one of these books that you can find in the MCC library. With that said, you need to scroll through on your own time and read the rubric for the paper, how to get a 20 out of 20 or a perfect score, um, check out the content, check out the organization. Go through and read what it means to have a reliable resource. Read through what it means to have a college level written paper. Go through and read what it means to have a format for on your own time. So this was a quick introduction to our course. Um, I greatly look forward to meeting you and again if you have questions just let me know and I will be there to help you and guide you out.